on for as long as Schoology stays on. All right, my friends, will you go to, in your books, it says 5.1 notes at the top. That's not which, that's for my stats class, sorry. All right, so we're going to kind of start trying to tie a few things together as far as derivatives go, and we're going to be looking at something called a sine line. Um, but the fortunate thing is we are Desmos active class, so a sine line is going to be pretty easy as long as you know how to graph on Desmos, which I'm pretty sure you do. So I'm on 5.1, it says 5.1 notes at the top. Oh, um, this Friday, we have a real life um, math scenario. Um, I will show you how to become a millionaire. If you'd like to see it, it's not hard to do. All right, I'm trying the best I can to draw this little diagram. All right, so this particular di dry, di di diagram that we have up here, um, I'm going to draw something called a sine line right below it. And points that are important to me would be B, D, and F. Okay. So B, D, and F are max, min, and then point D is actually something called a point of inflection. Inflection. Okay, you don't really need to know the, de the definition of those. But what a sine line does is this. To the left of B, it's negative. To the right of B, it's positive. And then from B up to F, it's positive, And then after G is negative. All right. So what does this exactly mean? So a lot of times in calculus, they'll give you just a sine line. and give you kind of a representation of what the graph looks like. OK. What this negative means is the slope along from, a, from way up here down to B, I have a negative slope. So my tangent line right there would be negative. At point B, the tangent becomes zero, and then it starts on its way back up. And notice I go, it goes from positive to positive. And what happens at point D? Point D, so we've learned how to do the first derivative. There is a second derivative. The second derivative is you just take the derivative of the first derivative. Okay? That's what it means. The point of inflection is where it's on its way up, but it kind of flattens out. So exact, this point tangent exactly at D is a horizontal line, okay? So it's not increasing or decreasing. So that's why you go positive, kind of have a break in the world, and then positive, because you'd have these positive slopes. And then from F down, it's a negative slope. So the sine line basically tells you where things take place. If you look at your sine line, and you... This is going to be kind of obvious because we're looking at the picture. So because it goes from negative to positive, that means we have a minimum value at B. Okay. When you see two signs that are the same, that means that you have a point of inflection. Okay. Meaning that exactly at that point of inflection, the 
tangent line, an exact line point, the tangent line has a slope of zero. And then when you see it go from positive to negative, that means a maximum had taken place in between the two. So it's kind of silly what you're looking at. You go, well, duh, I can see it's a minimum because I'm looking at the picture. But the problem is, is if I give you just the sign line, there's going to be point or times where we say, okay, can we try and draw, draw the picture based on just the sign line that's given? So if you flip over the page to the back side, so we have a sign line that's doing this. It goes plus, negative, negative, plus. Then we have one, three, and five. Okay. So they want us to try and sketch the graph the best we can off of this. So I'm going to put my one, my three, and my five on my x-axis. Okay, so if I go a positive slope, so my graph is basically doing this. I have a positive slope of some sort. And then it goes from positive to negative. So something takes place here, and then at three, it flattens out, and then it continues on its way down. And then when you get to five, your graph's going back up. Now notice, I don't have anything drawn on the y-axis. I just have, I have the one that is showing a max, the five that is showing a min, and the three is showing my point of inflection. Okay? So if the signs, <coughs> if the sign doesn't change, but it goes positive, positive, or negative, negative, that means that there's a point of inflection that takes place. Okay? All right, so example two, example two, we have a negative three here, we have a one here, we have a four here. It goes negative, positive, positive, negative. So if we were to try and draw, try and draw this graph out, that's a negative three. So we have a negative three here, a one here, and a four here. You're just trying to draw the best you can. So I have a negative slope coming like this to the three, then it goes a positive slope, it flattens out, and then it keeps going up, and then it starts going down. So we have a max here, a min here, and right here is a point of inflection. Okay? Um, so, a few things to think about. If we take a look at the graph that they have there, let's pretend we don't have technology to graph. Okay, I know we do, but let's just pretend we don't. But they're saying we have this. Okay, so if I wanted to take the derivative of this, I'm going to get 3x squared minus 12. Agree? Mm -hmm. if, I find, if I set this equal to 0 and solve it, x squared equals 12. That's an x, if you guys can't read that. x squared equals 4, root, root. x equals positive, negative 2. Okay? This is where it's going to cross the x-axis. Okay? It's, or, no, I take that back. I take that back. It's not that. This is where a max, bless you, or a min are going to take place. If I take this, which is this, and I want to find the second derivative to it, I'm just going to take the derivative of this, which is going to give me 6x, and then, and that's it. So then you can say, okay, if I set this equal to 0, divide by 6, this becomes a point of inflection. Okay? So there's a couple things. Again, a point of inflection, it's on an upward trend, it flattens out and then continues up, or it's on a downward trend, flattens out and keeps going down. So let's take this information that we know and jump onto Desmos to take a look at what the graph really is going to do. So I'm going to just jump on, take a look at Desmos. You always get to use Desmos. I'm just trying to show you the, the foundation of where it's coming from. 
So I'm going to do uh, y equals <coughs> y equals oops x to the third raised to the third uh, minus twelve x. darker for you. All right, there were a couple <coughs> values that I want to talk about. Now I'm going to use vertical lines to represent it. So if we go back to graph, I have positive and negative 2. So I'm going to go x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. And then the last one is at x equals 0. Oops, that should be a negative 2, sorry. And then x equals 0. All right. So there's an awful lot with our graph to take place. So the blue and the green line, so the blue and the green up here on the board, is where the derivative was equal to 0. So this and this. So these lines are crossing either a maximum or a minimum value. The purple line is the second derivative set equal to zero, which means that there's a point of inflection. A point of inflection means a couple of things, and I have to kind of I have to draw you a really bad sketch to show you how a point of inflection works, but we can do it. Okay. So on this particular graph, if I bring it smaller, I can say on my sine line, I can go from negative infinity, so if I went like this, I'm going to bring up negative 2, 0, positive 2. So the slope here is positive, slope here is negative, slope here is negative, slope here is positive. Okay? So this means it's coming up, going down, going down, going up. So if we look back at our graph, positive slope along this right here, negative slope coming down, right here at the zero is a point of inflection, then it continues down until it gets to, to the two, and then it starts coming back up. Okay? Um, think of a point of inflection as this. I have a third degree polynomial, and I'm going to draw a bunch of tangent lines in here. Okay, and I'm going to draw a couple over here as well. So there's a certain spot, like here, I'm going to highlight that. That pink line right there, this pink line right here, has a slope of zero. This is called a point of inflection. Okay, and it basically is means a couple things. Slope is zero. It's continuing on its upward or downward trend. This is also where. This is also where the tangent lines flip from one side of the graph to the other. Okay, meaning the if you look at the tangent lines on the left, they're kind of all on the top of the line. And then if I look at the tangent lines on the right, they're at the bottom part of our graph or underneath it. I mean, they're all kissing at once as a tangent point would do, but that's what we're taking place with this. So um, I think you guys can handle, I think you guys, let's see what we got. We got, uh, I wanted a day, can we do that? I think you can handle it. I want to give you the opportunity to work on worksheet, 
5.1, and I will just tell you that if you do all of them, I want to put this in the grade book tomorrow. I mean, I'll come by and check off the stuff. So I want to give you the opportunity to get a start on it. Ask me questions if you have any. Let's see if you can find, kind of finagle through the stuff. If you guys want to be entertained, swing by my fifth period class. I got a bad report from the sub. 